In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own professional looking and sounding live stream so that you can put on your own live shows from home. If you're a musician like me, then you're probably missing gigging. And let's face it, you're probably missing the hairdressers too, but that's another story. Anyway, this video is going to save you tons of time so that you can focus on your music. Hi, I'm Richie. Welcome to my channel. When I started out live streaming, I found there wasn't much information online that was from the viewpoint of a musician. So audio quality is massively important and you just don't get good audio quality if you stream live, say, to Facebook directly. I've put this video together to show you what you need to do in order to get professional looking and sounding live streams. Everything that I talk about in the video is gonna be linked in the description below, so you can check that out in your own time. Plus, there's also a special bonus later on in the video where I give you three major tips so that you can ensure that your live streams rock and you give your audience a great show. Let's start with what software you're gonna need. I would recommend using OBS Studio to do your live streams. OBS gives you much more control over your image and your audio. By using OBS, you can ensure that the sound quality is superb and works across all devices. And you can also customize what your viewers can see. So you can make your live stream personal to you. Now, OBS is a free download, so that's another advantage, but it also works across multiple platforms. So you can use it to live stream on dedicated streaming platforms such as Twitch, or more generic platforms like YouTube or Facebook. Now, I'm gonna use Facebook in this example because one, it's free, two, everyone's pretty much got it, and three, you've probably already got a fan base on Facebook or, or a following of people who are waiting to hear from you. So by utilizing your current fan base, you're already at a head start. Now, what hardware are we gonna need? First off, you're gonna need a computer. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a desktop, a PC or a Mac. I have been using an iMac, it's from 2013, it's really old, but it works just fine. Next, you're gonna need a camera. I started off using the built-in camera, that's completely fine. If you've got access to a webcam, you can use that for live streaming. It's possible to use your phone as an external camera, but you will need extra software. And another option to consider if you really want to up your game is to use an external camera such as a DSLR, which is a great option because you can have more control over the camera to set up the picture to suit you. Again, if you want to use a DSLR, you will need a capture card or a USB conversion device for the computer to speak to the camera. Next, you're gonna need an interface. Now, if you record at home already, you will be using an interface in order to plug your instruments into your computer. There are lots of different types of interface available, but to get started, I used a simple USB powered device. It's got two inputs, very basic, but completely fine for live streaming. Don't rush out and buy loads of new gear initially. Just try and use what you've got already and you can build your live setup from there. Okay, the fourth item we're gonna need is a good internet connection. Now, the biggest tip I can give you on this is that you need to be hardwired into your router. It makes a massive difference when you're live streaming and it minimizes any chance of any disruptions. So before your next live stream, make sure that you've got an ethernet cable and it's plugged directly from your computer into your router. Then if you haven't done so already, you might want to do a speed test, which you can do online in order to find out what internet connection speeds you're getting. Now you'll get a download speed and an upload speed. The upload speed is the primary factor for streaming. And you wanna make sure that your upload speed is at least one megabyte per second. If you've got more than that, then fantastic. If you've got less than one megabyte per second, you may find that the quality of your live stream will suffer. So the next item you're gonna need is your live setup. Rather than plugging into your amp or your PA for a live situation, you're gonna be plugging directly into your interface. And that is beneficial when it comes to gigging at home because you can wear headphones and not annoy your neighbors. Now, the last point I'd like to consider when it comes to gear is lighting. A well-lit subject can massively improve the look and feel of your live stream. Start with a basic key light, which is positioned behind the camera towards you. You can always add more lights as you go along. If you're a gigging musician, you can use lights that you would have used to light the dance floor or stage, um, or perhaps you've got a lamp at home that you could use. Failing that, Use natural light, set up in front of a window so that the window's behind the camera and lights you naturally. Next, we're gonna get into how to set up OBS for your live stream. Okay, so we'll head over to the computer. If this is your first time using OBS, then it may give you the auto configuration wizard. 
prompt, uh, in which case you can use that if you wish to do so. If not, you go to the top of the screen, the menu at the top of the screen there, and select Tools and Auto Configuration Wizard. I won't go through it step by step in this video, but that allows you to optimize the settings on your computer for your live stream. Instead of running that today, I'm gonna to quickly show you how to adjust your settings so that it's optimized for Facebook. Okay, head down to the bottom right, click settings, and it'll take you to a new menu. We're gonna to go to the stream section and make sure that Facebook Live is the selected service. Then we're gonna go down to output and on simple output mode, you'll see your video bit rate here and your audio bit rate. Now, video bit rate can be up to 4,000 kilobytes per second for Facebook. I've run the auto configuration wizard and it recommends that with my internet connection and my hardware that I use a video bit rate of three megabytes per second or 3,000 kilobytes per second. So that's what I'm set up for there. The audio bit rate is a game changer in OBS. Um, when I didn't use OBS, I was only getting a maximum of 20 kilobytes per second audio bit rate, and that sounds really poor. Facebook allows you up to 128 kilobytes per second, uh, which I would recommend, and that transforms the quality of your stream in terms of the sound. I can't express that enough. That's the main reason why I would choose to use OBS. If you select output mode advanced, it just gives you a couple of other options and important ones too. Facebook is recommending that the rate control is CBR, so make sure you set to CBR. Also, the keyframe interval, this is an important one, needs to be two seconds on Facebook. So it's different across other platforms, but Facebook recommends two second keyframe interval. So make sure that's set to two. And then finally, the video settings. Now Facebook is expecting a 720p image. So make sure that the base canvas resolution is 1280 by 720 and the output scaled resolution again 1280 by 720. And Facebook is also recommending a common FPS value of 30 frames per second. So 720 and 30 for those and you'll be cooking on gas. Right, now we've got the settings done, we need to create a scene. Now a scene is basically a canvas that you can overlay visual and audio elements on to personalize your stream. So I'm gonna click the plus sign in the scene section in the bottom left and create a Facebook Live scene. Now that we've got the scene created, we need to add sources to the scene, i.e. our video, image, and our sound. And I'm also gonna show you how to add a picture you can add anything you like, but I'm gonna add a logo in this example just to personalize the stream. Right, so next we're gonna head over to the sources section and the plus sign, and we're gonna select video capture device, and we are gonna name that camera. You can name it what you like. And then that's gonna give you a drop down menu of devices connected to your computer. So I've got Epoch Cam, which is the software that I use to connect my mobile phone to my computer. I've got Blackmagic Web Presenter, which is the device that I use to connect my DSLR to the computer. And I've got FaceTime Camera built in. Now I'm gonna choose my DSLR, so Blackmagic Web Presenter, and there you go, you can see me again. And make sure that the preset or resolution is set to 720. Okay, so I've obviously got the recording information here because I'm recording this video for you to show you how to do a professional live stream. But when I'm live streaming normally, then that obviously won't be there because you don't need to record on your camera when you're live streaming. Right, we've got the image now, but if this was a live stream, you wouldn't be able to hear me yet because we haven't added a sound source. So back into sources and add, and now we're gonna do an audio input capture. Now this is gonna be my interface. And again, it's gonna give you a device list. So you can use the built-in microphone on your computer. I could use the Blackmagic Web Presenter again, but I'm not gonna do that. My interface is my, my guitar looper board. So I'm gonna select that. So now you can see that when I'm talking, the sound is registering on the monitor and your audience will be able to hear you. So last but not least, we'll add a logo. So there are lots of options, have a play around with them. The most important ones are video capture device for your camera. You can add text, there's some cool features on that. A media source if you want to add a video, for example. 
display capture shows what's on your screen, um, which is helpful, especially if you're gaming. And uh, there are a couple of other options as well. But I'm going to add an image. And this will be logo. And you can import that from your computer. Great, so we've added a logo in there. It's in a different resolution, so you will need to, I'll need to resize it. Which we'll just do very quickly. Still too big. Nice and small in the corner. Just an idea to personalize your live stream. Okay, so now we've got a nice picture that is lit well and we, you can hear me well in 128 kilobytes per second audio, so that sounds good. And we've got a little logo there to personalize the stream. Right, now we're ready for a sound check. When I first started live streaming, there wasn't really any information on how to do a sound check. And I was really worried that I was gonna be live streaming for the first time without having tested anything and everyone will be able to see it and it will be awful. So this next section of the video is on how to do a sound check so you can practice in private and do as much adjusting as you like in order to get the stream exactly how you want it. So we're gonna head over to Facebook, click on the live video button and this will bring up the live producer screen. I find it really handy to have Facebook on one side of my screen and OBS on the other so that I can see what's going on in both. You may want one or the other or you may want to do a similar setup. So Facebook is going to give you the option to go live now and you can either do this on your timeline or on a page that you manage. Now, I would always recommend going live on a page if you can. It's more professional. The followers to your page will get to see you live and Facebook creates a unique URL for your live. That creates a handy archive of all your last live performances so you can refer back to that. It's also a really good resource for promoting your page. So I'm gonna select post to a page you manage. If you don't have a page, you can still do this on your own timeline. So the first thing we want to do for a test is click on publish as a test broadcast, because if you fill any of the information out and then click that, you'll lose it all. So that's another handy tip. This video is packed with them. I like to put the time in the description because if you're doing more than one sound check, you can refer back to which one was which, say if you've made any changes to your settings. Okay, we're pretty much ready on that side. Make sure that test broadcast is clicked. And then we're gonna head over to get started and use stream key. So if you scroll down to live stream setup, uh, you'll see a stream key box and we're gonna need to copy that. Now a stream key is just a code that you can pop into OBS and that tells OBS where to stream to so that Facebook can pick up the signal. So we're gonna do just that now. We're gonna head over to OBS, click on settings, go to stream and get rid of the one that's in there already if there is one, paste in the one that came over from Facebook, click OK and we are now ready to stream. So you can click start streaming over on OBS. Don't worry that's not going to do anything in terms of going live as such but what you will need to do is look in the bottom right hand corner or scroll to the top for the screen and you should see that OBS is now sending your live broadcast through to Facebook. Those eagle-eyed viewers will notice that there is a short delay. It's actually 10 seconds, um, but you'll soon get used to that. And that's another reason for having both of them open at the same time, because we're in real time over on OBS. That's what I normally look to while I'm performing, if I need to check out how the live broadcast looks or sounds. Another useful thing to note as well is that just under your live screen in Facebook is your stream health. So you can see here that we're getting roughly three megabytes per second, which is what we've set to 720p resolution and 30 frames per second. And the audio is approximately 128 kilobytes per second as well. So while you're live streaming, you can keep an eye on those and make sure that they are roughly at around the same settings that you made in OBS. So now that's all working, you're finally ready to do your sound check. You can hit start test over in Facebook and within a matter of seconds, you'll be going live. Okay, when you're ready to end your sound check, just hit end test broadcast there. And that will take you to the end screen. Facebook likes you to rate the quality of the broadcast, so you can do that. 
and then you can view your post. Great. Also, don't forget to stop streaming over an OBS. Another useful tip here is to watch your sound check back on multiple devices. So maybe watch it on a phone, an iPad, a computer, a TV perhaps hooked up to a sound system. That way you can check to see how your live stream sounds and make any adjustments you set up until you're happy with it. Okay, so now we've done our 43rd sound check and we're finally happy with how we look and how we sound for our live stream. We're ready to do our live. Now, the live is the same process as going live for your sound check, but do make sure that your test broadcast button is not selected and make sure you've got a compelling title in there that alerts viewers of your stream and makes them want to click on it. Whilst you're live, you're gonna be able to see the amount of viewers who are tuning into your live. You're also gonna be able to see comments and make comments yourself if you can. And also as mentioned in the sound check, you'll be able to monitor your stream health to make sure everything is running smoothly. Okay, after your live stream, you have some other options available to you. So you can view your post, but also you can trim your video or create a clip from your video. Trimming your video is an excellent way if you have a start screen, for example, to trim it down so that people who are watching your video back after the event don't have to sit through the build-up. And let's face it, most people who watch the video actually aren't watching it live. So that's a helpful way to get straight into your video. And it's also really good for people who are watching it in your live stream archive to just get straight into the action. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and get lots of useful information from it. Let me know how you're getting on and feel free to drop me a comment about your own live stream. I'd love to see it. Now, before we go as promised, I'm gonna give you three further tips to make sure you get the most out of your live stream. Now, each tip is based on an area which I'm gonna go into more detail in its own individual video. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. And before we go, if you've got even just one thing from this video, then please smash the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, number one, create a nice camera scene by making sure you're well lit, in focus, the background's not too busy or distracting, and that you're well positioned in the frame. Number two, audio. Make sure that your audio is spot on and you can do this by referencing the monitor in the audio mixer section of OBS. What you wanna be doing here is hitting the sweet spot and that sweet spot is the yellow part of the gauge. So when you're playing live at normal performance volume, make sure that that gauge is bouncing around in the yellow there. If it's too far down in the green, your audience won't be able to hear you properly. And if it's going into the red and peaking, there may be distortion. The third and final tip today is on your performance. Make sure you encourage your audience to interact with you in the comments. It's a great way to get people involved in the show and people love a shout out. Even better still, they love it when you play a song that they've requested. And just remember to have fun. Thank you so much, I'll catch you next time.